I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place, my friend. Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe by clicking down below and enable the notifications too. I understand that it helps with the algorithm. Do I know exactly how? No, I don't, but I know it's important and I need the help, so thanks very much. Today, I wanna show you exactly where to dive into the wild world of Lucha Libre, pro wrestling that comes from Mexico as part of my series, Starting Points. And especially for non-Spanish speakers, Lucha Libre can sometimes seem like this chaotic, confusing mess. The barrier for entry for utter noobs is quite high. There are a lot of rules you have to keep track of. For example, in Lucha, there are no pile drivers. That move is illegal. And the pacing of the match can sometimes feel odd, especially when the tags are fluid and the partners are changing in and out of the ring constantly. And then sometimes the match looks like it should be over, but they just keep on wrestling. What's up with that? Well, I wanna help you disperse all of that contextual fog so that you've got a clear path in front of you to enjoy some Lucha Libre. The Mexican style of wrestling begins to emerge as something wholly separate from what was happening in the US and Canada at the time, roughly 100 years ago. The oldest wrestling promotion on earth is a Lucha Libre organization. It's Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre, or CMLL. But throughout their long company history, they have alternately been known as EMLL, much in the same way that the WWE was once called the WWF. Founded in 1933, you can imagine, a company that is 88 years old goes about things in a very old school way. And they are very traditional in both their presentation and their execution of Lucha. The match we're gonna watch today hails from CMLL, but they are hardly the only Lucha company out there. Another major promotion is AAA. And no, this is not the organization that helps you start your car when your battery is dead. They're a touring Lucha Libre organization as well, but they're more heavily influenced by the television output of the WWE from the past 25 years. And there's smaller groups out there as well, like IWRG in Nicolpin or The Crash over in Tijuana. And believe it or not, in any given week, there are more live wrestling cards being presented in Mexico City than in any other metropolis on Earth. Your starting point into Lucha Libre is October 7, 2005, and we're gonna travel down to the Cathedral of Lucha Libre, Arena Mexico in Mexico City. The Friday night cards at Arena Mexico are a decades old tradition, and the top bouts from these cards get televised out to the general public the following week. We're gonna watch the main event trios match where two wildly talented teams go at it during a period when basically the whole CMLL promotion is red hot. Okay, for simplicity's sake, let's start with the bad guys. We're gonna talk about the trio of Rudos that you're going to see in this match. Ultimo Guerrero and Tarzan Boy are part of Los Guerreros del Infierno, the top heel stable that's been around for about four years now. But when longtime Technico Atlantis turns heel and joins them, the group becomes Los Guerreros de la Atlantida. And that's exactly who we're going to see in action in this match. It's Ultimo Guerrero and Tarzan Boy with Atlantis. You're going to notice that Atlantis's tiny little mascot, K Monito, who wears a fuzzy blue monkey suit, is out there in the corner of the Rudos and actually gets involved at one point during the match. Even though Atlantis is now playing the part of a villain, and he's being a tad nasty toward K Monito, they're still paired together at this point. In 2005, Los Guerreros de la Atlantida are the best working Rudos in all of Mexico, and they've got a bunch of really cool and complex double and triple team moves that they can deploy no matter what configuration they happen to be working in. And Los Guerreros are consistently in the main event slot of the Friday night cards at Arena Mexico, a position which is generally reserved only for the slickest professionals out there. Okay, let's talk about the Technico side of the equation now. On this team, we've got two bona fide legends teaming with the fastest rising star in all of Lucha Libre. We'll start with 
El Hijo del Santo. He's the son of the most famous Mexican luchador of them all, El Santo. He continues his father's legacy and wears an identical silver mask, complete with teardrop-shaped eye ports. El Hijo del Santo is something of an ageless wonder. His flying moves look incredibly graceful, and just like his dad before him, he favors the camel clutch submission hold as his finisher. And then there's Dr. Wagner Jr., also the son of a legendary luchador. You can probably guess, his dad is Dr. Wagner. He wears all white with black accents. There have been a ton of doctor and medic characters throughout the history of Lucha Libre, and they all tend to wear white. Dr. Wagner Jr. flip-flops between the Technicos and the Rudos almost annually down in Mexico, and even when he's playing for the good guys, he's still pretty surly. And last but not least, on this team is Mystico. Where to begin? There are three Mysticos I think we have to talk about. There's the original Mystico, who used the name for years and was popular in Juarez. But then in 2004, CMLL repackages one of their undercard wrestlers and reintroduces him as Mystico. That's the guy we're going to see in today's match. This wrestler had spent years paying his dues on the undercard under the name Dr. Carante Jr. I bet you can guess who his father was. Well, as you might imagine, the original Mystico decides to take CMLL to court about this new Mystico because that's the name he's been using. And guess what? He loses. So long story short, the original Mystico from Juarez has to pick a new name for himself and he becomes Incognito. Now years later, both Mystico from CMLL and Incognito end up in the WWE together as Sin Cara, but boy, that's a video for another day. And yes, there's a third Mystico too. Because while the first two guys are off in the WWE making Sin Cara happen, CMLL just casts another wrestler and puts him under the mask of Mystico. But just so we're all on the same page, we're not watching the original guy, now called Incognito, nor are we watching the guy who's currently wrestling in Mexico as Mystico. We got the guy in the middle. And luckily for us, we're seeing him at the very height of his powers. There's an 18 month period where I would argue he's the most spectacular high flyer in the world. And he's being partnered with El Hijo Del Santo and Dr. Wagner Jr. in an attempt to elevate his status. Even though Mystico's been in the main event mix for some time now, they're trying really hard to cement him in the minds of the audience as a top player. All right, this bout is a best two out of three falls match. And going in, you need to know the team captains. The captain for the Rudos is Atlantis. It's named after him, Los Guerreros de la Atlantida. And the captain for the Technicos is Mystico, because these two have been programmed directly against each other for several weeks at Arena Mexico. And why is it important that you know who the captains of the team are? For this reason, a fall can end when the captain is pinned or made to submit or his two partners are. So in other words, in order for Los Guerreros de la Atlantida to win a fall, they can either beat El Hijo del Santo and Dr. Wagner Jr., or they just get Mystico. But it's really important that you understand that dynamic at play, or all of this is going to seem really confusing. You remember that phenomenon I alluded to earlier, where it seems like the match should be over, but they just keep wrestling? Well, this is why. In that scenario, if Los Guerreros were to just pin Dr. Wagner Jr., they haven't won the fall. They either have to also go get El Hijo del Santo, or if they get Mystico because he's the captain, that automatically ends the fall. And you will see this match happens to have two referees, one wearing a light colored shirt and the other wearing a dark colored shirt. And yes, you're meant to infer something from that choice. You're gonna see one of these referees plays the part of an impartial official and calls things right down the middle while the other one just looks the other way and allows the Rudos to get away with all kinds of crazy heel shenanigans. This is a storytelling device rarely seen outside of Lucha Libre. One more thing you need to know before we watch. This match is billed as the Gran Revancha, the great rematch, because for weeks on end, Mystico and Atlantis have been going at it in heated confrontations, even ripping up each other's masks. And the combination of all these elements leads to a really volatile, chaotic atmosphere in Arena Mexico, the 
the fans respond to accordingly. What they most want to see is the Technico captain, Mystico, winning a clean fall over the Rudo captain, Atlantis. So the more that Atlantis runs from Mystico, the hotter this match burns. I picked this match for you because it is one of my favorite trios matches from my absolute favorite period of CMLL history. And if you were as hyped to watch this thing for the first time as I am to watch it for about the 50th time, then first, leave a like, and then click here. It'll take us right to Arena Mexico for the Gran Revancha, where Los Guerreros de la Atlantida are going to wrestle Dr. Wagner Jr., El Hijo del Santo, and Mystico.